I'm sorry. The person you called cannot be reached now. This afternoon, I'm watching my two-year-old niece, who says to me, Pizza, pizza. The Alexa orders her a pizza. Next thing I know, I have a pizza showing up at my door. My niece is open, and the government knows when I want a pizza. What are we going to talk about? I told you what we're going to talk about. Rabbi Shlomo? Okay. I want to welcome everybody to Claimant for Everyone. And one of the great things about this show is that Larry Claimin, other than being a righteous fellow and the greatest one, is also a lawyer that studied all forms of law. And right now in the news and current events, we're dealing with some serious law issues. One of the things that's going on this week has been Congress's um, decision to limit the president's power, you know, to basically, you know, castrate the president and his abilities to act and swiftly and quickly. What is as a lawyer, what is the correct thing? Well, the correct thing is the president has the power, the executive power, to take action to protect the interests of the United States. Now, if it gets to a question of declaring war, then, of course, the Congress has to be involved. But it didn't get to that point with regard to Iran. And all of these individuals that are coming forward, mostly Democrats, people like Pelosi, but also Republicans like Senator Mike Lee and also Rand Paul, I mean, they just simply you know, have their shtick, so to speak, and, and, and they're wrong. Eight, they're wrong. eight Democrats, by the way, actually switched sides today and voted against it. Three Republicans switched sides and voted for it, but eight Democrats actually. The president has to have the ability to react quickly, and Congress does not react quickly. And frankly, Congress is a bunch of clowns, so whenever possible, keep Congress out of, out of the act, in my opinion, and, quite and, apart from the legal aspect. And, 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 and I think it's very important to state that you are not— you, you were against the Iraq war, you're against war, you're, you're against intervention, that this isn't like you're saying this as a, you're not, I'm not sitting across from Lindsey Graham. Well, let know. me tell you why I was against the Iraq yeah. war. We went against the wrong country. Yes. We should have dealt with Iran then, we wouldn't have the problem now. Uh, I wasn't necessarily against the Iraq war until I found out that I was lied to like everybody else with regard to weapons of mass destruction. By the way, I had a doctor in Washington, D.C., uh, James Rainey, who actually had a complaint filed with the Board of Medical Examiners because one day, he told me this, he was examining one of the officials of the Bush-Cheney administration. He was doing a proctology exam. Yes. And the guy asked him, the patient, he says, why are you down there so long? And he said, I'm looking for weapons of mass destruction. That's, that's, he, got a, he got a complaint filed against him. I that's, mean, that's how ridiculous the whole thing became. But, <laughs> and, and the reason I bring this up is this isn't a partisan thing for you. This is, you know, you're, you know, you're a Trump supporter. You're, <coughs> excuse me, you're a Trump supporter, but you're not just blindly defending the president's willingness to. Not at all. Not at all. In fact, I don't like war either. I mean, I'm a child of the Vietnam War. I almost went, but for the fact that Nixon ended the draft the year I was going to be drafted. But frankly, if if it came to war with Iran at this time. I'm not in favor of killing civilians, but I am in favor of just decimating the regime and the military structure and the Iranian Revolutionary Guard. I would, frankly, have liked to have seen a war in that regard. I mean, because if we don't fight them now, like in Dr. Strangelove, when Slim Pickens rides the bomb down and says we might as well take care of the Ruskies now, it's going to be much worse later. I think we, we should seize the opportunity now and, and, and eliminate their nuclear capability at this time. That's if they have nuclear nuclear capability. This is where you it. this is where you and I disagree a little, a little bit with each other. I sort of look at Israel. I use Israel as the thermometer of the Middle East, you know. And let's say the the correct temperature for most humans, except for my girlfriend, is ninety eight point six, right? If the second Iran goes to a hundred and one point seven or one hundred and two, nineteen eighty four will happen all over again, which was when you, you, Israel decided to go and destroy Iraq's nuclear, you know, nuclear capabilities. So that's why I'm a little more he hesitant to think that Iran and believe Iran is as close to getting this nuke thing. You know, I'm, a, you know, it, hey, Larry, you, you're, you're, you, you don't, you know, you're, you're very, you don't necessarily always, you, you, you never believe the government, right? No, I don't believe the government. But look, 
nuclear bombs were developed in the early 1940s. Yeah. You can find the elements of how to assemble an atomic bomb in public libraries. Yes. I, but the, we, Repu- the Iranians are a lot yeah. of things, okay? I'm talking about the regime. There are mm-hmm. good Iranians, too. Most of them live in Beverly Hills or in Washington, D.C. But they're not stupid people. I mean, they're very bright people. A hundred percent. Evil, but also very bright. And they've lost a lot of nuclear scientists who have answered their cell phones incorrectly. You know, so I'm not as nervous about that. But I understand. I get it. And I I just, I'm one of those people after after Iraq, I, I have a hard time believing in, you know, and I'm not the skeptic. You know, it's just when it comes to certain things. Secondly, I wanted to talk about is we're both massive free First Amendment advocates. It's 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 the most important thing. We but we all grew up with the being taught in school you can't fire you can't scream bomb at a movie theater or is a fire you can't scream bomb at a movie right. theater. It's against the law. So with that being said, every time. You know, Donald Trump has been accused of screaming bomb pretty much by the Democrats for the last, for the better part of three and a half years. Since he came down that escalator ride, he has been accused of committing a crime. I mean, they have, he, he has been. Yeah, he, every minute. Every, every minute since he came down that of every escalator. Every day. Of every day. So today, we have Pete Buttigieg, to quote the president, screaming on Twitter, basically accusing us of having a part in the plane that got taken down by Iran's... You see, this is my point. Iran Iran shot down this plane, I believe, accidentally. I don't believe they did it on purpose. It gains them nothing. Actually, I, did, I believe they did it on purpose. So, so, either but, way, either they shot way, it down. Either way, he blames us for that, right? That, it, 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 that, to me, is screaming bomb in a movie theater. Chris Matthews the other night, having a reporter on from Iran without having any... A, a, not an ounce of evidence screaming that 30 American soldiers were killed at 2 in the morning, you know, or 9 at night here, or whatever time it was, that's akin to me of screaming bomb in a movie theater. That it, it, The rhetoric that is going on on cable news right now, Larry, there were titles, where, World War Three is on the where way. Where does the title of my book come from? Whores, Why and How I Came to Fight the Establishment. Horrors in Congress, horrors in the judiciary, horrors in the media, horrors in the executive branch. You know, that's what we're dealing with here. So why and can't you have a lawsuit right now? Why can't tomorrow morning you, who knows how to find a... a, a, a why can't you sue P- Pete Buttigieg for... It's called standing. It's one of the weaknesses in our legal system is that American citizens don't have the right to bring lawsuits unless they're personally affected. In fact, the only state, my home state, Florida, is very progressive, not in the leftist sense, but it gives, in many instances, voters and taxpayers the ability to bring cases. For instance, if you pass a tax law in Florida, the legislature, and a a citizen doesn't like it, he can challenge that tax law whether he's affected by it or not. We need to expand the concept of standing in our legal system to allow citizens to bring lawsuits. And we also need better judges because, frankly, the hacks that we have, and particularly on the federal bench, scratch the backs of the elite establishment. And, you know, it's a a subject that I've been writing about over and over again most recently is that we're in a revolutionary state because there's no legal and peaceful means to bring about change in this country anymore. And what the left is trying to do, which... People don't realize, right, the, the Second Amendment, why the Second Amendment is so important. And it's sort of a fascinating thing to me is that the left, the left, and, and I'm not saying liberals, and I say the left, and sadly they've been co-opted, but, you know, I'm a fairly liberal person in many ways, and, you know, but as far as the left goes, they are, um, you know, obviously trying to steal free speech from us. And they're following the doctrine of Venezuela, of Nazi Germany, of all of these different places that once you take the guns, then you could take the speech. And people don't realize that until 10 years later and all of a sudden, you know, Venezuela and you have Maduro and... And this goes back to the founding of our country. What did King George III do? He seized our firearms. He attempted to seize our firearms. 
He took our legal system, our, our criminal justice system, back to the court of St. James, took it away from us. Okay, he taxed us beyond belief. You know, the American Revolution was fought essentially not just over First Amendment rights, not just over what became Fourth Amendment rights on reasonable searches and seizures, but over property. They were capitalists. Yeah. The American colonies were supporting the entire British Empire. It was the richest part of that empire, and they were raping us and pillaging and drawing our wealth away from us. And therefore, that was the basis of the American Revolution, and it was natural law. Our founders said, we don't recognize the laws of King George III anymore. They're unjust laws. You find that in the Declaration of Independence. There's a higher law. There's the law of God. There's a law of divine providence. They even wanted to insert in the Declaration of Independence a prohibition against slavery, but the southern states wouldn't allow that at the time. But Jefferson and Adams and Franklin were against slavery, but they realized the time had not come to end it. So we are at the same point today is that the legal system that we have has been perverted by the judges, by the lawyers, by the legislators, by the deep state. And we have to find our own natural law, which coincides, by the way, with the law if it had been enforced. Our system is the result of the Hebraic legal system, the Talmud, the Ten Commandments. And, and that's our lodestar anymore. But the crap that comes out of Congress, these laws, that's not the law of God. That's not the law of man. That's the law as they say it is. Right. And I'm so, so, so. And, and the concept of the president can't take action, they vote for that, the House resolution, it's meaningless. Throw it in the trash. It's not worth the paper it's written on. And pretty much everything they write down is, 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 you could do the same thing. Yeah. What did, what did the Old Testament say? An eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth? And Jesus was no pushover either. He did a number on, on both the uh, the high priests and and the Romans. So okay. pretty much you're saying there's nothing. So Pete Buttigieg could pretty much put out a tweet that could start a war. I mean, literally. And, and, and I'm Pete, not just saying that. Pete Buttigieg is desperate. Okay, yeah. You know why he's desperate? He's an articulate guy. Okay, He's confused. He's mayor of Terre Haute, Indiana, which is a mess. Okay, And he's also gay. And he knows candidly that we're not ready to elect a gay president. We're not ready for a first man in the White House. And most people can't envision you know, him and his, and his significant other sleeping in the Lincoln bedroom together. I'm sorry, that's just the way it yeah, is. No. Okay, So he's got to grasp at straws right now because he thinks he might actually win. And I'm not saying it's right to be prejudiced because someone's gay. I'm not a homophobe myself. Do what you want in your own house, but leave me alone. But he's not going to be elected. American people are not ready for that. So he's grasping at straws. So, and that's a frightening thing because we have a lot of people right now just to get noticed are grasping at straws, because the president sucks the oxygen out of all of them. He, I mean, he truly does. You know, I it's it, it, and it, this is something I've written about is if you you know I live across the street from one of the Scientology centers, you know, and um, when I I remember about three years ago, three and a half years ago before the president became president. It was like almost about to be the downfall of Scientology. These were what the left was fighting. They were fighting, you know, MGO, at, you know, but whatever that that you know the the food stuff, and they were fighting Scientology. And all of a sudden, every crisis that happened pre-Trump no longer exists to the left. It's he's the only crisis that exists to them. No, and and, and they're without, dishonest. But you know, I, I give him solace. And I give him credit because I'm the same way. The more people push at me, the more I push back. And we're going to have to take a break for a couple minutes because your building that we can't share where it is is under major construction. So Either that or someone's trying to burrow in, maybe like the Palestinians, you know. and The digging tunnels. The digging, the, digging the, tunnels, the, yeah. Digging, I think they may be coming in, after in, us. Instead of accepting the money and the, the food. Well, and, you know how I would end the whole Israel thing? Buy them a Cadillac. Okay, in a condominium in Jordan, and tell them that's their homeland. Okay, but I, I think they probably most mostly would accept that. Yeah, I I find that hard. I find, you want to do a get smart here? I find that hard to believe. Would you believe? Yeah, it was um it was one of the eighty percent of the population in Jordan are Palestinians. It's, it should be a Palestinian. That should be the Palestinian state, not on the West Bank. That's for another episode tonight. Okay. I, I really do just want to focus on though more than anything. Because it's frustrating to the people. It, it, it's, 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 
I think the biggest frustration that people have to the regular people at home, that, you know, to, to really the Trump base, who it, it, who who has no party no party really affiliation. If you went to a Trump rally and you said to most of those people, you know, put an R in front of your name, put a D in front of your name, they'd probably just say, just put a T in front of my name. There is no more party of the Republican. What does T stand for? Trump. Oh, okay. You know, it is the party of Trump. And what that I party... I you meant twit. <laughs> no. But what, what sort of... And I, oh, I've constantly said this to people, and what the left doesn't understand is that the reason Trump got elected is because people... You know, to quote Dirty Dancing, you know, don't put baby in a corner. And people were so sick and tired of not being heard. And you know, they were not just sick and tired of not being heard, and we've talked about this before. They're tired of being lied to. Yeah. And remember the book, uh, I think it was by Christopher Hitchens, Nobody Left to Lie to, something to that effect. Or maybe it was Dave Shippers, the impeachment manager uh, on Clinton. But we're sick of that. We wanted somebody to take the government apart. And frankly... Trump's the only one that was ever willing to do that. And look what's, and, and, and look at the price he's paying for it. Yeah, of course. The deep state has tried to destroy him. He can't even have a telephone call without it being wiretapped or intercepted. Uh, you know, it's an outrage. And, and we talked about this before, but the president's going along with this mass surveillance with Section 702 of the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act, which picks up every call overseas, regardless of where it's made, and continues with the USA Freedom Act, which incorporates the Patriot Act, the mass surveillance in this country. It's been used against him, and he's got bad advice from the people around him, no, it's putting which, up which, are, which are the deep state, because it, 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 it destroyed him. It, it may destroy him if he gets impeached and convicted with regard to his calls at, with the Ukraine president. Secondly, I, have, I, I, I was actually thinking about this today, is what's your opinion on Apple breaking, you know, unlocking phones? Well, I'm against it. I don't trust Apple. Where did the technology for the NSA come from? It came from these high-tech companies. Apple, Google, YouTube, Instagram, the whole lot of them have the same technology that the government has, where they can turn on your cell phones, they can turn on your smart TVs, look at Alexis, uh, Alexa, whatever it's called, right. that's in your house. No, but I'm referring to, if when we, you know, when we have, um, when we arrest somebody, you know, somebody, you know, like the San Diego shooter you're, you're, you're a couple of years ago, or one of those things, we, we, we can't break into their phones. And Apple has said, we will not allow you to break into the FBI to break into the phones. Well, I think that's the right thing to do. If you want to break into the phone, you need to get a warrant but from, they're, from a but, reputable judge. Right. But the problem is that judges aren't granting them the permission to do it. Well, because Apple is so powerful that the judges bow down to Apple. I've got cases against Apple. I've got cases against Google, YouTube. A Republican, a hack Republican judge that Trump appointed. He doesn't know who he appointed as judges. Well, I mean, he's had most so of these, many. Most of these judges, he has no clue who he yeah. appointed. Establishment Republicans gave him a name, rubber stamp. Okay, he goes around telling us how great his judges are. They're not great. I haven't found one yet that has the courage to do what needs to be done. I have an antitrust case. A Trump judge dismissed it. It's now up on appeal. To the D.C. Circuit. It was complete BS, the reason that he dismissed it. Well, if you don't mind, you, since you brought it up, what's the case? The case is uh, for restraint of trade and attempt to monopolize with regard to the various social media companies in excluding conservative content from uh, their websites and their internet sites. And it's a very strong case. And in fact, the D.C. Circuit, Google and the rest of them tried to have it dismissed in the initial stages on appeal. And the D.C. Circuit said, no, we want to hear this case, and we've got a number of interveners in this case filing amicus briefs. It's going to be a landmark case, win or lose, because the D.C. Circuit's going to reach these issues. And we're going to be right back after this break, um, and we'll be joined by Louis Fine, one of our finest contributors. You need to go down and get him. Yeah, I thought you were going to say Farrakhan. No, that's funny. <laughs> okay. Look at you tonight. Yeah. Well, everybody, welcome back to Claim for Everyone. We got our... Our, what's that word? It, 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 I always you're the um, resident you, sage. No, the Ob the Ob Ob how do you pronounce it? The Obuns. The, the I can never pronounce that. I know word. what you mean. Yeah, the, you're you're our. It's uh, like the, the newspaper policeman. Yeah, you're 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 an honest version of Brian. What Brian Stelter was meant to be. 
fat. But better guy. looking, of course. He's yeah. that CNN guy. Yeah. I, yeah, yeah, I know yeah, who you're talking yeah. about. Yeah, yeah, the fat. That's that, yeah, yeah. that could, was his if job. If you could offer a more unflattering no, you know, he's not, I would But Lewis is it. not a flat, a fat bro- blowhard. No, and Lewis is honest. Yeah. And one of the things we were discussing, and just you know, I want I actually want to get your opinion on this is um, we were discussing. Instead of flat blowhard. <laughs> We were discussing the f- we were getting back to the First Amendment. We were discussing, you know, it's uh, you're basically you're not allowed to scream fire in a movie theater, right? It's against the law, right? Since Trump walked down the escalator or came down the escalator, and no, he didn't walk down the escalator for the better part of the past three and a half years. It's he's been screaming it, for the left. He's been screaming fire in a movie theater. Th- that he's been talking. Yes, yeah. it's, it's sufficient it, it, to constitute it, it, a violation of right. the First Amendment, and, and they've been going after him for crimes against everything for the better part of the better part of the three and a half years. So today, Pete Buttigieg, judge, right? He comes out and says that we're at fault for you know the Iranian plane going down. No, no, it was know. a Ukrainian plane being shot down yeah, by, by, by the Iranians. By the Iranians, you know, and is, that's it, where, is it Iranians or Iranians? Or is it potato or potato or tomato or tomato? Uh, whatever, whatever they dislike more. Whatever they dislike more, the the, the not nice ones. Okay. Call them Arabs. Uh, the, the Arabs, right? And Arab. um, well, and, and Arabs. And so, so my question is, at what point? And I asked Larry, and Larry basically said, "You can't sue him because why can't?" And you know, if if Donald Trump made a miss, had said that statement today, which is far worse than anything he said at Charlottesville. The left would literally be, you know, screaming from the rooftops. By the way, let me add this, and this is one of my criticisms of the legal defense of Trump. They never were proactive. They just took punches. Yeah. Okay. The president himself could sue Congress over this issue. He'd go to court on this issue. But he doesn't want to because he has the authority. Why, why, Why give it to a leftist jurist to make a bad decision to create precedent? Enough from us. I want to hear from our handsome abondsman. Our honorable... Sage, he, uh, I'm, as I said, I'm I'm as close to a First Amendment ab- absolutist as you can get. So, Buddha judge, judge, Buddha J, however you pronounce it, I'm I'm not a fan for many reasons, none of which have to do with his sexual orientation. I say that because I don't want to be attacked for being a so-called homophobe. Hardly right. support gay marriage, support gay rights, but he he offered his opinion. He offered his opinion, not a very good one. Not an insightful one, not a very helpful one, but it's easy to blame America. That's what's expected from people on the left to criticize America, to say what's wrong with America. There are plenty of things. There are plenty of things wrong with America. But if you only focus on what's wrong with America, the portrait you offer to the world seems as if indeed we have a fascist president. We right. don't have a free independent Congress. We have a complacent or compliant Congress that does the bidding of a fascist president that somehow nonetheless is able to impeach him. But what a Democrat says that's critical or in opposition to the president, I don't care. It's an opinion. But that's it's an opinion. But that's, but it may not be an educated opinion. But it's but, but it but it level it rises to the le- rises to the level of being extremely dangerous when other countries are using our Congress, our our, our houses, demagoguery, their 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 hate against us, it it could cause major damage. And I'm not just talking about from the EU. I'm talking about from these psycho countries that are using this as, you know... I think it depends on the circumstance. I think sometimes it it, it sends the opposite message. You can look at, say, the nuclear freeze movement during Ronald Reagan's presidency, and perhaps there were people in the Politburo and the Kremlin and the Soviet Union who said, sky means business because look at all the people in the streets, not just in Washington and New York, San Francisco, but in London as well, that Reagan and Thatcher are nonetheless committed to these principles, and they will deploy... The um, Pershing missiles against our SS, uh, I believe it was the SS-20s, um, or SS-2 missiles, and they, they're, they're on bowed. And the same with, with George W. Bush and Tony Blair. Again, you could say for ill in this case because of their support for the Iraq war and their insistence on going to war, but they, were, they did not have a change in policy because of protests in the streets, nor did President Nixon allow himself to be influenced by the protesters and said as much, and today is his birthday, so I bring that up, very ah. apropos, 107 years old. 
and uh, he, he made that clear to Have the press. Have you ever been, by the way, to the many to, times to, to the Nixon Library? Many times. If yeah. anybody has, I would like to go. The, you want to go? Yeah, I've been there many times. Oh, really? I've and been there. Pre and post renovation. Yeah, I've been there. I was there post renovation, and I got the tour. I got the uh, behind the scenes tour because of. Uh, right. And it is. It is. You want to know what I loved about it more than anything? Is it doesn't whitewash his the history. Well, that's because the National Archives now runs the library. Yeah, it. it, it they it, did not when it first opened yeah and it did they did such a good job with it and um it, it it you know nixon was you know nixon nixon was the true peacemaker you know to quote somebody i know very you know he was the peacemaker and he um it's an incredible library you have to go you should go but one of the other things i was talking to larry about was and i want to know your opinion on this is apple's refusal to crack to give you know the passcodes you know, when when we find the phone, what is, I mean, you know. again, the, the, it depends on the circumstances. And I am not a fan of big corporations or big government bigness in general. It's one of the few instances where we were talking about Mitt Romney last time. Well, yeah. this is one of the few instances where I agree with a Romney, his father, George Romney, who tried to instill in his son. I don't know how well he did it, he had more than one son, but uh, with Mitt Romney, this aversion to bigness. And I I no more trust a corporation than I do the government, but I I think Apple has made a very good decision. I don't, I don't have much regard for law enforcement uh, or the FBI, and I think I, I prefer Apple erring on the side of caution, let the FBI take Apple to court. See, that's what I. This is what I want to hear. This is what I like because when you just, I said, said the same thing. You said the same thing, word. but yeah. but when he said it to me, and I've been saying this a lot because we we've been hearing on the news the last, you know, with the, you know, it's just the top of the FBI that's the problem, right? And then I start thinking, you know, through history of like what the FBI has done, you know, having Whitey Bulger as an informant while he's murdering people. We have the Attorney you know, General of the know. United States, Robert Kennedy, yeah. having the FBI illegally wiretap Martin right. Luther King. Right, and it's like they always say it's just the top ranks, and yeah. I'm like. Well, the top ranks hired the wiretap. I mean, they have video of uh, his, right. Well, they also sent yeah. they also sent the audio tapes to his wife and encouraged him to. Well, commit he suicide. did have relationships about ninety some women, but uh, it's not their. Which, business. in my opinion, is irrelevant. Is irrelevant. Yeah, well, he paid the ultimate price, and that's by the way. I want to say that about uh, the people who that's will not never, their business. Right. That's who will never who will never concede anything good or cede any ground to the supporters but of Martin Luther King. What Jr. was their business, and I'm an admirer of Mount Martin Luther King, what was the FBI's business was his connection to communists. Right, and that, for the most part, I don't. I would say that hasn't been established because with in one or two instances prior to the march uh, on Washington, D.C. for jobs, uh, justice, and uh, inequality. I believe it's jobs, justice, and equality. You tell I'm not black. You guys are the college graduates, not me. So don't uh, going to college doesn't mean anything. But but it don't matter if you're black or white. But they, uh, but Michael Jackson. But King and Philip Randolph made a point of uh, making sure that um, uh, I think it was Bayard Rustin who was uh, a communist sympathizer at one point, or uh, but but he was also gay. That he that he not speak at the march. So they were they were they were very much aware of their vulnerability to criticism and attacks, and there's a reason why they also chose someone like Rosa Parks to lead the Montgomery bus boycott, to be the symbol of that alongside Martin Luther King Jr. Because there were other people that had refused to give up their seat on the bus, but she was a model in every sense of the word of what they wanted the movement to represent, as opposed to later on, say someone like uh, Stokely Carmichael. That, who, whom Martin Luther King Jr. was very clear in criticizing and also or, Co- or Colin Kaepernick or uh, Angela Davis she wasn't really a part of that but you get my point yeah I get your point and you know so it, it's very scary though for people at home and I keep I, 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 I go back to this you have and hon- Malcolm X right you have, you have real honest citizens at home real people real, real did, did, remember the show Real People it, Sarah Purcell mm-hmm the show, Real People. Remember that show on NBC in the 70s? No. Late I, 70s, I, early 80s. I, I don't remember that Oh, that's that right. Show. You didn't grow up with TV because of the... Yeah, yeah, yeah the, the whole... The you orthodoxy. Know, yeah, but... No, I grew up with a TV. I had a TV. I just I'm a little younger than you are. And uh, by half a month... Real, re, no, but, real, but, real um, People was around. It was a good show. I, I, I don't remember the show, but there there are honest citizens sitting at home that that see all of this. 
they see this hypocrisy. I mean, it, the government no longer. That's the great thing about Trump is he's brought out the he's brought out this what we have. I, whether you love it or hate it, because so, it's it's really uncomfortable. He's, he's the, uh... And I'm not talking about him being uncomfortable. What he's brought out is uncomfortable. Today, that Congress had a vote over war actions after he killed a terrorist is uncomfortable that they had it. But this is what he's brought out. And you have people sitting at home watching this going, why in God's name do I pay taxes? Like, why should I pay? Well, you know, Good point. Wh- well, that's what I say to people yeah. who say Donald Trump is not my president or George mm. W. Bush is not, when they said, when Bush wasn't their president, I said, I have well, no problem with that. I said, I'll tell you what you should do. April 15th, don't, don't pay taxes. It raises a, a Just bigger, tell them that you don't recognize Bush as the raises, legitimate winner of the 2000 election. It raises a bigger issue as to whether our Republican form of government is working. Yeah. Okay. And look, the founding fathers were enlightened. They were enlightened. They were brilliant men. But to give unbridled power to representatives, to vote any, any which way they want for their own political purposes, to me, calls into question whether a Republican form of government uh, the correct form of it, government. It used to be a lot worse. You had candidates who who could keep their war chests that retired as multi millionaires. Yeah, that's that's a fr- that's frightening. They, that, that, that's they can't a, do that yeah. anymore. But they but they well, were they able do, to do they that. do it. They just do it under the table. That's all. They, uh, but my if I were, there was some there was some congressman, African American congressman, who was found with uh, cash uh, in his freezer. It, 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 uh, yeah, uh, member from Louisiana. Yeah, this wasn't that long ago, by the yeah. way. This is like ten years. But ago. there were also plenty yeah. of Pauls, Dan Ross, yeah. and Dukowski. Among them, yeah, it, it, go, it, go, it, it goes both corruption. sides, it, it, and and sadly, the guy from Australia, from Alaska, Ted Stevens, you know, whose name was just right. destroyed, and who you know, and who sadly died in a plane crash, was exonerated after you know all was said and done, and uh, and 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 my thing is to people at home, it's like there there really is a loneliness and an isolation, like I brought up. There, there's something. There's a loneliness and an isolation. It, and I, that feeling of isolation when you see people like James Comey and all of the, and just everybody getting away with so much. And if any American citizen were to do those same things, they'd be in prison. Well, there's if, if there's correct, they, they, they would need to get somebody like Larry Klayman. Right. You're talking about isolation. I want to yeah. get to that in a moment. I just want to say that one of my chief complaints with the right is that. They are right in their criticism of so many agencies of government, that they are inefficient, they're too costly, they don't work well, but they make an excuse for law enforcement. Everybody in government is bad except except our cops, except the FBI, yeah. except law enforcement, and the left will condemn Anybody in government who pursues a career in law enforcement and tell you every other agency yeah. in government has a good purpose and is working yeah. well or can work better if we give it more money. Now, you were talking about isolation earlier. You ever get to that point where you're so isolated and, you maybe, and maybe you haven't left your apartment in a while? And All then the you time. Can, right. So you ever get to that point where the dog is talking to you and you can and you hear the dog is, is giving you Let orders? Let me tell you something. Yes. My dog is smarter than most millennials. In fact, he... She has a vocabulary bigger than most. I'm trying to make an, a defense for David. No, Burkins. I'm serious. She doesn't use the word like. Every th- <laughs> she doesn't use the word like every three words. Instead, she licks. Right. Okay. So I give my dog more credit than. than if most we're going to blame someone, blame Sam. Yeah. Let's let, let, let who your mom. No, yeah. Don't knock right. dogs. Yeah. Okay. Right. They're who, the best creatures on, on no, earth. He's not, I'm not a cat person. Dog. He's not knocking dogs. You misread. And don't you, knock you, up dogs. You miss no. here sometimes, Louis. Uh, you have to go. You have to go uh, about three miles meaning, east to meaning do that. Human, meaning human dogs. It's, there's a. I just people feel alone. They do. You know, people and 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 in, in some bad ways, social media has given an outlet to <laughs> some of the worst kinds of people. But on the other end, there's still people that are sitting at home feeling like I don't have somebody. You know, there aren't enough Larry Claimants for everybody. You know, there aren't enough. How many people have lost businesses, have lost land, have lost stuff yeah. because they don't know, there is nobody fighting for them. Well, get back to Washington, D.C. and dogs. The expression is, you want a friend in Washington, get a Truman. dog. Oh, yeah, Harry Truman. Do tell. That, that was, he coined, he coined the phrase. He, made, he said it. That's his quote. I, 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 w- I wasn't paying attention. Repeat it, please. 
that if you want a friend in Washington, get a dog. Oh, and who is it that said, you know, who is it that said you judge a country by how they treat their animals? Uh, you're I, talking about, you, no, you're, are you talking I, about the... Uh, I'm paraphrasing that quote, no, it's the the way. I think it's the, um, I think it's the, uh, it may be the, the Tolstoy quote about, uh, about you can judge, uh, we're paraphrasing here, the quality of a civilization based on how it treats its prisoners. Okay, and listen, we have to run... Um, or some other Russian novels. We We do have to run. I want to thank our great ombudsman, Louis Fine. You said it right. I, I hopefully... Yeah, I okay. you, you're, you're, you got you're, the hooked on phonics you're, you're, works. You're, 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 it, it actually does. Yes. And, uh, of course, the greatest... People want to see what I'm doing. Go to freedomwatchusa.org, and uh, that, and also you could you you could find us at, on Twitter at at um, LK for everyone. Did I get it right? LK for everyone. LK for everyone. LK for everyone on Twitter, Facebook, same thing. Instagram, the same thing. LK the number four everyone. And I just want to remind people: argue if you argue argue if you want to read because you need to. But always remember, Larry Clayman is for everyone. Let me ask you a question. As we as we segue out, um, have you ever reached that point where your blood sugar is so low that you decided to you almost peeled that thing open and ate the chocolate inside? I have no idea. Uh, what that, you're that, uh, to. The piece of gelt you're wearing. Uh, you, <laughs> How close did you I, come to? I actually? can never have a clean outro. It, 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 I know. It, we're, we're not, we're, there, are no, there are no clean well, outros. That chocolate's got to be so stale we're, and brittle. It, and we'll, uh, we'll see if it survives to the next. That would kill a dog. Chocolate's deadly for and, dogs. And, and on and on that, <laughs> you guys are nuts, but it's a good kind of nuts. Let's end it. Ciao. Shalom. Alvita Zane. I think I could cut you off. Now I have to find.